Hello and welcome to this video on powering up RPA with AI Fabric. In this demo, we'll go through an example of automating a complaint classification process using UiPath Studio and AI Fabric. You'll get to see how AI Fabric simplifies the whole process of training, testing, deploying, and retraining machine learning models with RPA. Before jumping into it, let's bring some context into our scenario. Consider that we're working at a bank having a dedicated email address to receive all sorts of complaints. And when it comes to complaints, we know how important it is to reply quickly. The bank decides to automate the process of sorting through emails and placing them into dedicated folders from where specialized teams can process them easier. By putting a robot in charge of moving every email into its dedicated folder, we'll save a lot of time and end up with an easier to manage account. Let's see how this can be achieved with the help of AI Fabric. Here, we already have two test sets created from a batch of past complaint emails. We'll use them to train and evaluate our machine learning model in AI Fabric and then deploy it to our RPA project. As you can see, there are two folders here, one for training and the other for testing. Inside the training data, we have the Excel file which we'll use for training the email classification model. And inside testing data, there's a file that will serve us for testing the email classification model. Now let's move to UiPath Automation Cloud and go to AI Fabric. As you can see, there are several projects already created, but let's create a new one. Click on Create Project, give it a name, in our case, Customer Email Classification, and a description, and then hit Create. Now that our project has been created, let's take a moment to go through all of its subpages. ML logs, ML skills, pipelines, ML packages, data sets, and dashboard. In this demo, we'll go through each of them one by one. Let's start with data sets since we've created these earlier. We'll first upload the training data set by drag and drop. and then do the same for the testing data file. As mentioned earlier, we'll be using these two sets of data to train and evaluate an ML package. So, let's get to it. There are two options available, either upload an existing package saved locally or select an out-of-the-box package. The out-of-the-box packages are of two types here, developed by UiPath or open source. Let's go for one of these open source packages now. Since we'll be using it to classify emails, we'll choose Language Analysis, English Text Classification, and click Submit. Notice that it says the package is retrainable. This is important and you'll see why. All right, let's now give it a name, Customer Email Classification, and then click on Submit. And that's it, we've created package version 1.0. With the two datasets and the ML package, we now have what it takes for the next step. For this, let's navigate to the Pipelines page. Here is where you can view all of the pipelines used in the project, along with information about their type, the package used and its version, as well as the datasets involved. Pipelines use a dataset and a machine learning package as input, together producing an output. The output depends on the type. Training pipelines produces a new version of the ML package. Evaluation pipelines produce a set of metrics and logs. The third available type here, the full pipeline, runs a training pipeline and an evaluation pipeline in succession. All right, it's time to create the first pipeline in our project. We'll click on Create New, Select Training as the pipeline type from the drop-down menu and then choose our package with its current version. In the Input Dataset field, we choose the training data where we previously uploaded our training CSV file and then input the desired parameters, environment variable verbose set to true. Finally, let's enable GPU and choose when the pipelines should run. 
We can select Run Now and the pipeline starts running right after its creation. Or Time Based, in which it starts running at the specified date and time. And Recurring, meaning it starts according to the schedule that we set up. Let's go for Run Now and hit Create. Notice that our new pipeline is queued, so it's about to start. Fast forward and the run was successful. You can see its duration in the table, 116 minutes. Let's take a moment to check the logs, where we can see more information about the run and that the new version of our package, resulted from training, has been validated. Now let's go back to Pipelines and create another pipeline run, this time for evaluation. We'll select the type, choose the customer email classification package again, but this time select the trained version 1.1 because it's the one that we want to evaluate. And of course, we'll use the test data Excel file. Let's set up the same parameter. Enable GPU and wait for the run to complete. And there it is. We can see here in the table the duration and the score. We now have created two pipelines, one for training and the other one for evaluation. And let's take a look once again in the ML logs. Everything seems in order. It's time to put the package to work. For this, let's navigate to ML skills and create a new skill. We'll start by giving it a name, then choose the ML package with the version that we trained and evaluated. Let's also give it a description, enable GPU once again and hit create. The ML skill will be available in a short while. And here it is. Now, let's move to UiPath Studio, where we have the automation project for the complaint email classification. We'll deploy the ML skill from AI Fabric in it, but first, let's take a closer look. We'll start with its logic. After the initialization, in which we define the output categories of complaints, the get email will retrieve an email and try to classify it based on its content. One of the outcomes of the classification is the confidence level. If this is bigger than the predefined threshold, the robot will move the email to the corresponding category folder and continue the process with a new email. If the confidence level is below the threshold, it will send the email for human validation. Based on the outcome, it will update the confidence level and move the email to the right folder. When there are no more emails, the process will come to an end. Now, let's take a look inside the classify email workflow. This consists of three sequences. The first one, processing the email body. The second one, making a prediction. And the third one, passing the prediction output. As you can expect, we'll be using the machine learning skill in the get prediction from AI Fabric sequence. So, let's drag and drop an ML skill activity and select the skill from the drop down list, customer email classification. It now displays the description, input and output here, and we can even test it. But for now, let's just configure the email body as input and where the output goes. It's that easy to deploy the skill in an RPA project in Studio. Now let's check out the retraining capabilities. For this, we'll go to the Move Email to Folder workflow. This consists of three sequences. The first moves the classified email to the right folder and the second one adds all of the classified emails in a data table and writes it to a CSV file. The third, which is the one that we're interested in right now, adds the new data to an existing AI Fabric dataset. For this, we'll add an upload file activity, select the customer email classification project that we've created earlier, the dataset in which we want the new data to be added, and the input file containing the new data. And this is it. The data on all the classified emails, including on those validated by humans, will be fed to the training dataset in AI Fabric. And since we've brought it up, let's take a look at the case in which the robot doesn't have enough confidence to classify an email and asks for human input. This workflow consists of a create form task activity, which looks like this and has the folders as output categories, followed by wait for form, task and resume. This will basically take the output from the previous activity and use it to resume the task of moving the email to the right folder, as well as update the confidence level. OK, our RPA project is now ready. Let's now quickly look at the input data in Outlook. 
It consists of all of these emails unsorted and it has the subfolders created. These match our categories defined in the workflow and included in the human validation part. We now have everything set to run the process and we'll do just that. This is our customer complaints process. Let's click run and select a robot and then click start. Watch how the robot is processing each email and then sending it to the subfolder where it belongs. All right, it seems that our process execution ended, but we still have an email in the original folder. It probably needs human input. We'll return to Orchestrator, navigate to My Actions, and there's the task. Let's assign and open it. So, there's our email for which the confidence level is too low. Let's just quickly read it and indicate the correct category. In this case, checking or saving account. Once we confirm this action, the process resumes and finally ends. Let's browse through the subfolders and take a look inside each of them. All of the emails have been distributed correctly into the corresponding categories. Now let's take a brief look in AI Fabric. If we check the training dataset, we can see that all of the output data from our RPA workflow was sent here. And this concludes today's demo on AI Fabric and the way that it can power up your RPA workflows. Thanks for watching and happy automation.